Hi everyone. So um, welcome. I welcome to people that are hopefully watching this sometime in the future as well. So um, and if you jump on the call, it's lovely to see you um, too. So um, my name is Beck Pitt, and I'm here with um, Rob, Leo, and Paco, and we're here at OE Global 22 here in, <laughs> here in North France, and um, yeah, to talk about the conference and how it's going. We're on day two now, so um, this is the Tuesday of the conference. Um, and it's kind of coffee time and tea time in the afternoon. So we're, you know, we're going to keep this short and sweet. That's why we're looking a bit sleepy. I know we're looking a bit fatigued, but we're going to liven it up for this conversation. And then, um, yeah, on to more uh, presentations. I can see we've got Jess joining us as well. Hello, Jess. Hi, welcome. We're just getting started and saying um, hello uh, from us here in OE Global. We're going to start off by um, just hearing people's um, impressions of the conference so far so we're on day two at the moment um so yeah uh, Leo, do you want to start and just tell us how's the conference going for you and highlights from day one as well yesterday the conference is going great um it's i think it's lovely just to be here and see people and talk to people i'm just really enjoying catching up with people i haven't seen for a couple of years and um, and just hearing about how things have been going for them. But obviously everyone really has the similar story to tell that it's it's been a pretty um, tough and kind of crazy time over the last couple of years and, um, and that they're uh, feeling, you know, slightly, um, you know, that it's, it's, it's weird but wonderful to be, be back together and seeing each other in, in the same place again. Um, and um, from the sort of conference point of view, I've been really, really enjoying the sessions and the, and the keynotes. Um, the um, astronaut keynote yesterday morning was good fun, I thought, about beautiful, beautiful photos. And um, yeah, quite inspirational. It's nice to have a, a, a keynote that, um, that mainly aims to inspire. So mm. I thought that was nice. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And you're speaking several times as well during the conference as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about what you're doing? Well, actually, in this one, I've, I have become kind of notorious for speaking too many times um, at every conference I go to. But um, but this one, I'm only actually involved in one session, which is coming up just after this um, coffee break chat. <laughs> um, and um, we're going to be presenting um, along, along with um, Javier and Igor and Virginia um, and also our kind of um, absent friends that also co-authors of it. We're going to be presenting about our policy brief that we recently wrote for the um, UNESCO Higher Education Conference. Okay. Um, so that's all about um, defining and developing enabling open education policies. Fantastic, yeah. And a big... Uh... If you are watching this, also keep an eye out for Leo's survey that's being circulated at the moment. Do you want to tell us a little bit? So I'm getting so all the questions because I know that Leo's got to run shortly to set up for the session. So I'm trying to ask all the questions now. So. No, this is this is good, excellent work, Beck. Um, <laughs> because Beck knows that my main task at this conference has been going around telling everyone that I'm um, trying to convince people to answer my survey, which is a kind of key um, key research instrument for my uh, my PhD. Um, research and um, so the survey is really um, asking people who work in higher education institutions about um, their views on the extent to which or what ways in which their institution um, kind of enables or supports uh, open education to happen locally um, if, if at all um, and um, and also there's a, a bit a bit of um, going into a bit of um, policy detail um, about, you know, asking about um, whether things have changed over the course of the pandemic, about um, what sort of copyright policies are in place and that kind of thing. And um, so I think it'll be, it will be um, really, uh, really interesting when I've got, um, got a decent chunk of results back to see what, what people around the world have to say about that. That's great. Yeah, so survey is open until the end of June. I think if you're listening and you're a GoGM member, then you should have had a recent newsletter which has the link in, so we'll also be tweeting about the survey. But yeah, please disseminate it out um, through your networks and um, do complete the survey as well. Um, uh, and yeah, contribute to Leo's, Leo's doctoral research, which is fantastic. Yes, <laughs> so that's lovely. Hi, Jess, welcome as well. We can see you on the call. It's really nice to have you here um, with us today. Um, if you've got any questions, um, please do uh, pop them in the chat as well um, as we go. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, uh, Leo, um, 
Um, yeah, is there anything just before, because I don't want to detain you because I know you've got to go. Highlights coming up from the conference. Um, we've got, um, well, the rest of today and tomorrow as well. Is there anything you're particularly excited about that's coming up? Oh, that's coming up. There's quite a lot of stuff on tomorrow that I'm looking forward to, but now it's gone from my mind. I think today one of the highlights, the uh, things that I really enjoyed was seeing um, the presentation from Dr. D, mm. um, from um, Glenda Cox and uh, Bianca Masuka, really um, great work, really interesting. I love the way it's not just about how um, open textbooks can save students money, but it's all about open textbooks towards um, parity of participation and social justice. I think really fascinating work. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, lovely. Thanks so much, Leo. And yeah, thank you for joining us as well. I know we've got um, a number of people um, with us from the GM network, both members and team and alumni here at the conference, which is really wonderful. I think I did my maths earlier. I think we've got around 13 different GoGNers presenting across a, the, the event, um, team and member and alumni, which is really awesome. So um, yeah, it's been a really good conference with really good GoGN um, representation as well, which is great. So yeah, thank you. So Rob and Paco, yeah. Um, I'm gonna run. Yes, thank you so <laughs> thank much. You. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Leo. Yeah, have a wonderful rest of the conference. Yeah, and, uh, yeah best see of luck with the presentation. Thanks, oh, and just as uh, yeah, just as Leo's leaving, we have we have more I'm people coming in, <laughs> which is great. So, hi, please come on in. And we're we're Watch kind of live, Jess. I hope you can hear us. Okay, <laughs> um, please just let us know. I certainly can. Yep. Ooh, I'm here me... eating my breakfast. <laughs> oh, no worries. No, we're recording. No, it. You're... Just so you're aware. You sound great. Okay, that's awesome. So yeah, we're so excited to have you with us. And just as Leo's leaving, we've been joined by the lovely Sarah and Kathy as well, <laughs> so, which is wonderful. <laughs> so, oh, thank you so much for popping by and saying hello. Um, we're yeah, excited to see you guys. So. Thank you to Sarah for grabbing me. <laughs> and who are we talking to? Yeah, this is Jess O'Reilly, a GoGM member. Jess, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, sure. Sorry, I cut out there. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me. We yes. can, yeah. My name is Jess. I teach at a college in Ontario, Northern Ontario. Um, and I've been a GoGN member for a few years now. I'm in the analysis stage of my doctorate of distance ed uh, degree, and I'm I'm working on um, OER enabled pedagogy, student perceptions of OER enabled pedagogy. Essentially, my study. Nice to meet you. Oh, thanks so much, Jess. And, yeah, and yeah. your voice is so soothing. I've yeah, yeah. Heard you, right? <laughs> I've heard you present and enjoy enjoy following your work. So. Yeah. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Oh, that's so lovely. Um, wonderful. So yeah, I'm happy, Sarah. It's so nice to have you here. Yeah, highlights of the conference so far, and um, yeah. I have to. Well, something kind of silly. So they at the network learning learning conference, uh, I had to ask, what can you do face to face that you can't do online? And of course, you can do most things, right? Both places if you have the time and energy. But uh, someone said seeing people's shoes. Yeah and finding out how tall they are in real life. And I thought, oh, that is, so that's just to buy Sarah time to come to a more thoughtful answer. Um, oh, it has okay. been a treat to get to, see, get to see people's shoes and to meet people face-to-face -face mm -hmm. that, that I hadn't met before. There, there is a kind of shoe selfie thing, isn't there? Like oh. People do, but my shoes are always awful. So <laughs> I don't approve of the shoe selfie. To bring you the full experience. Oh, there you ah. go. <laughs> This is what I'm wearing. Hey, I don't want to, you know, just, we want to, cool. you know, you know yeah. yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, providing extra time isn't going to make me feel more thoughtful. Oh, I okay. Appreciate the gesture. Well, I should have given you a warning. No, 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 no. no, I think um, one of the things that I've really been enjoying, of course, you know, there's seeing everyone in person and all the talks and whatnot. Um, but I've been really digging talking to people about who about stakeholders in OER. And so we have a lot of conversations with folks about like, okay, if we're looking at systemic change, like who are the stakeholders we should be targeting? And I've been asked this question by many folks. Um, and I work at a land grant university. And so I serve students and the public um, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And um, after the keynote this morning, and, and that, that was fascinating because he's a politician. 
I was talking to to Paul a little bit about this and like how powerful that is, like bringing um, you know OER into you know the sphere of politics and whatnot. And I was talking with folks about you know how I view our biggest our biggest stakeholders as being the public, really, because they represent everybody. You know, the public, every student, every faculty member, every politician. They were members of the public to start. And so um, it's just been really an interesting conversation to have with people from so many different mm -hmm. educational backgrounds, like different systems, um, you know, geographic areas, different languages and whatnot. That's been kind of like the theme ongoing. It's been really fascinating to hear the approaches. I, that, that, I agree with that. And the, and the networks and the community and the collegiality here, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's been yeah. really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I echo what Leo said uh, earlier about just, you know, the importance of being able to actually see people and interact again. And I think because you're used to, and if you're lucky enough to go to a lot of these kind of conferences, you're used to a rhythm where you sort of see people fairly regularly, even if it's a year apart each time. Yeah. but you're able to kind of keep in touch with what's going on in different areas yeah. and different projects yeah. and having a couple of years of not having that even though there's been virtual conferences and stuff yeah. you just don't have as good a grasp of all the different things that people are doing nope. um, <laughs> so it's really good to have that kind of catch-up period and and also just kind of get a sense of how people are doing you know rather than Ooh. just yeah. here's a zoom call where someone can kind of kind of pretend to be okay for a bit right um, <laughs> They're dying but the it's time. harder to <laughs> It's, it's, it's harder to be inauthentic, if you like, yeah. when you're actually around people for a few days. Yeah. And I'm not saying there's like widespread inauthenticity going on online, but you just get more of a sense, just more of a sense of how people are doing and what they've been up to. Yeah. And it kind of fills in the blanks a little bit. Yeah. But also it kind of reminds you that you've spent so long not having that and yeah. just kind of yeah. relying on this in this, you know, uh, sort of limited forms of interaction. And of course, you could apply all of that as well to distance education and, you know, yeah. how, how does it feel if you're just virtual all the time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing we found with GoGN is that because um, we had a, a whole kind of online pivot during the pandemic yeah. and uh, Beck presented on this yesterday. And what, what my feeling is about that is that the virtual stuff works really well if you've already got that community in place. Mm -hmm. But it's harder to bring people on board when you're starting off virtual. It's harder for people to kind of get involved mm -hmm. in that conversation if they're just another person on a Zoom call and mm -hmm. they're just a bit lost in there. And again, you can say the same thing about distance education. It's, you know, yeah. How do you get people to, to sort of um, break the ice with each other when it's all just you know through the screen? Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking a bit about that and mm -hmm. just kind of. Yeah. I think so too, though, if you think of like the OER 20 right that's the one that was the first pandemic it went online yeah, yeah. the alp yeah yeah, yeah. The, there was i feel like there was so much interaction with with that conference you know that that one was strong and then mm -hmm. by the time we got two years into it it was just it was just exhausting yeah. so i think that that had an impact too i think that perhaps a fully online experience well we know that they can be effective i think just being exhausted from the pandemic and also so much bad online stuff kind of nibbled into all of it yeah um, i definitely felt that we got to a point where because everything was just online zoom meetings everything for months yeah. even before that conference mm -hmm. right. by the time the conference has come around my battery is running low yeah you know yeah. For, that, for that sort of interaction yeah uh -huh. and so i thought i probably attended less than i would normally have done uh -huh. yep because it was like i just need a break from yeah. sitting here looking at the screen yeah. uh -huh. So back to the, you know, uh, Rob's point of like the, the point of entree and like establishing a rapport, well, either with your students, your distance learners or within the groups. I, I mean, I don't know when you joined and you're saying you've been in GoGen and you know, with GoGen for years. I joined during the pandemic, so okay. I definitely didn't feel really connected with the group at all. You can tell the ones that have met each other face to face. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah, 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 and I remember um, it's really fascinating, like how online and distance can flatten everything, mm -hmm. and it's really left to the interpretation, um, personal narrative, and the lens that the individual is looking through. And I'll just give a personal example. Um, like I got pulled into this um, by some random person that I, you know, met at uh, 
<laughs> at the at uh, OE Global at the end of 2019 and then joined wow. in 2020. And that was my entree into the organization. And I remember there was this WhatsApp group being like, hey, why don't you join this group and everyone will be talking and stuff. And I left it because I was like, I don't know anybody in this group. They're furiously discussing things back and forth. And every time I tried to engage, they were just like, what you're saying is weird. You know, they were just like, that's weird. Um, and so I was like, I'm, I can't, like, I don't understand how, and that's like where you lose that dimension. And so trying to think about like, you know, because I've, you know, teach students online and, and whatnot. I mean, you don't have that high touch, like even mm -hmm. just with the face-to-face -face and the digital screen, like how do you ensure the things aren't misinterpreted or contextualized differently or the narrative is coming out in a certain way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm this, you know, an anomalous necessarily, I'm, you know, standard human. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> standard issue. Standard issue human. You know, I have an example for that, no? After two years of pandemic, imagine you're attending a virtual conference. I by chance by mistake join the incorrect um, uh, Zoom link. What do you do? You probably can just leave straightforward, but here in one of these rooms, you and it happened to me. <laughs> by yeah. mistake, you go in the incorrect room and yeah. then you are so embarrassed to leave that you just go. <laughs> yeah. And the good thing is that you actually learn things you were. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, social pressure. You're like, I can't leave. I'm embarrassed. Serendipitous <laughs> learning through social pressure. That's fun. Yeah. 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 That would get, it gives some ideas for like an online conference where you could just kind of do like a lottery pick of like which session they'll put you in. They do sometimes um, have the kind of water cooler chat things and yes. online things. Yep. I'm not sure about it myself. Um, yeah. It feels a bit contrived compared to the whole point is it's a natural kind of mm -hmm. yeah. thing. Yep. Um, yeah. And, but I also think there's a, there's, a, there's a value to just kind of being somewhere that's new for most people uh -huh. and kind of having some just experiences around that. And it like, levels the playing field. Yeah. 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 Um, and it, but also I think being in a slightly unfamiliar scenario Kind of makes you open up a little bit and talk to people you yeah. know and function as if you're at home just kind of at the computer again yeah. it's a bit like okay but ultimately this call is going to be over in 20 minutes and yeah. i'm going to go back to what i was doing before yeah. you know yeah well and the fact that at, at the face-to-face -face conferences the food appears i mean you know maybe you have to go to a restaurant but i'm not having to sit here and think about did i go to the grocery store what am i going to eat after this what do i have planned for supper yeah you can focus on what's oh have you yeah. having to sneak like bites off of off camera yeah like, how many people have done that you're just like oh. yeah yeah and we haven't had any dogs barking yet so we should have brought dogs in so we feel at home but, yeah uh, we tried at our university i wanted to fund um folks that were attending online conferences i wanted to give them a stipend to have food catered in, you know, it's like, hey, here, yeah. call, hey. you know, diner, but, but we couldn't, it was against the rules of whatever, yeah. whatever, yeah. but that, that, that's a big difference, having cool. to plan in the back of your mind, what am I going to cook for dinner? Yeah. You know, can I have cereal again? No, I'm out yeah. of milk. Or you know. take, or feed your kids, or like any of the other, oh, the God, dogs. because they're there too. Should I feed they're, the kids? Everything. Exactly. <laughs> Should I feed, Should the I feed them to the dogs? Yeah. <laughs> we have yes. one oh. hamburger bed, who's going to get it, the kids or the dog. Exactly. Or me. Yeah. All oh, right. Me. And we'll see. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so <laughs> we diverge. <laughs> So, but I'm going to zip yeah. out because I haven't gotten coffee yeah. yet. Yeah, so I was going to say, up. we're getting up to close to yeah. like eight more minutes till the next session start. I know we're in the yeah. coffee break as well. Thank you so much for dropping well, by. Well, thank you. And it was yeah, so good yeah. to get yeah. to see you again in your soothing voice that yeah, I man. need you to be yeah. my alarm clock. So we'll yeah, see you all thank later. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Jess. Oh, so fun. You're all making me miss like face to face human stuff here. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm living vicariously through you. Um, but it, it seems like it's a really energizing conference so far. Yeah, we're having a good, we're having a really good time. I think it's, it's quite like, a lot of people here. Yeah, there is. Um, you and, said something like 350. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. And there's a lot of different sessions. Um, there's like French language tracks, there's sessions in Arabic and Spanish. And yeah. Um, so oh, yeah. how wonderful. Yeah, it's really good. Paco, you went to the Spanish language track sessions earlier today as well. Mm -hmm. I know you're saying that's some really interesting initiatives and stuff as well. I don't know if you want to share anything about those. No, I think, it, yeah, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a way to uh, potentiate participation from different cultures and and different languages work well. I just feel that in the next steps, it's gonna be like, okay, but we need some interactions. So probably we need some sort of, of way to produce uh, uh, 
uh, translation, maybe with artificial intelligence, but at least to have to have a community. So, uh, but I mean, it was it was very good uh, initiatives I, I wasn't aware of, and uh, definitely thinking about OGN and how we can collaborate with the dog projects. Uh, that, mm. that was really good. Yeah, I think uh, it was very interesting because yeah, even the keynote today. I mean, the, the quality of the keynotes and the profiles. I mean, so kind mm. of at, at top level. So we, we got we got a candidate to to run for president in Ecuador, and uh, so and, and getting to know all the, what they are doing. Probably I don't know. Probably would have been aware of of all those things without the uh, presentation like this one. It was very uh, pedagogic. So yeah. Yeah, there's been some great sessions, and um, yeah, did, did you have, um, I don't know if there was anything you want to ask us about just specifically, or any, like, things, we've got, um, yeah, if you've got any questions, just let us know, otherwise, yeah, we keep chatting about, <laughs> about things that are coming up. Um, and I do have something I'm curious about. Oh, yes, um, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, so the updated UNESCO definition of OER, um, omitting that word retain. Is that a conversation, a concern that's continuing to be discussed by the community at OE Global or have um, the sight lines sort of shifted away from that? Hmm. I have not heard anyone discussing that. No, I haven't been in any of the, it's, I know there was a session yesterday of, of a UNESCO What's session. Yeah. Sorry, Jess, that's the one. I think we must have. Yeah. yeah, it might have been the session with this session that we should have gone to. We, 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 were, presenting, didn't go. we were presenting yesterday as yeah, well. Yeah, so apologies. Yeah, we need to. It okay. could be a clash. We will go in, yeah, chat to, chat to some people. Um, and, uh, I would get say maybe put it, put it on Twitter on the conference mm. hashtag and see what you get back. Yes, yeah, there'll be lots of people looking and mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. on there. And yeah, yeah, that would be a good way to. Yeah, of yeah, it's just an interesting temperature check, right? Because. Um, you know, a few years ago, that was sort of the big buzz, at least in the uh, like open ed circle, the the Wiley Hilton sort of circles are really um, upset, right, about that lack of uh, permission to retain and, and the cheapening of OER that they think will come with that. Um, what would you say if you had to summarize in a few key words what the what the main themes or focus areas have been? Uh, what would you throw out there? I'd say there's quite a bit of sort of tales from the pandemic kind of things, which you'd expect really, because that's the update for people. Seems to be quite a lot of policy stuff going on. And I would say that's directly related to the UNESCO declaration and yeah. how it's filtering through and being implemented. Um, I think there's also there's quite a few open textbook things going on, mm. often connected with a social justice kind of interest. Um, mm -hmm. to, be, to be honest, I've also presented quite a few times already. So I've, about half the sessions are the ones that I've been presenting in that I've actually attended. So I haven't seen that many. So. Sure. How about you? Well, yesterday um, we had a GM session and then we also, um, or we also Paco and Karina, um, presented on the DEI work. Um, those guys have been doing, have been doing um, in Latin America um, and the collegiate program um, and recommendations around that. So that was really great to have those two GoGN sessions. And then, um, yeah, we've had a number of different folks presenting on things. So earlier, just before, I think, um, or the penultimate session before, um, now we had Glenda um, Bianca, um, as, as um, was, was mentioned earlier, talking about the dot 4 project as well, and open textbook work in South Africa, which is awesome. So, yeah, there's some really great, um, great sessions, really interesting kind of mix of mix of mix of things. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, great. And we hear the next one's going to be. Oh yes, the next Edmonton. Edmonton. Yeah. Oh hey, that's a little closer to home. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Almost drivable. That kind of makes sense. This is the sort of 2021. I think the state follow up, isn't tweet, it? So that'll be dates, the proper so 2022. So, yeah, we're keeping it up. We're ready. spoiled this year then. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. It's one, the, one thing that's quite nice about OE Global is that it does move around and you get to kind of, because when you go and have it in a different place, you then get to connect with the people who within that orbit 
but they're not going to go mm -hmm. as far as not or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I like that about this conference. Mm. Maybe it's October next year. I don't know. I don't know. I know October coming soon. I had a meeting in 2023. We went to West but yeah. Yeah, it would be a bit more. Yeah. Would be great Everyone's blown their travel budget on this one already, so. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh great. Well, I'm, I'm wishing you all a wonderful conference. Thank you. I'll so keep much. my eyes on Twitter. Yeah, and thank I you. I hope you speak back. well. This was, yeah, uh, no problem. <laughs> it's really good to see you. And um, yeah, and um, yeah, thank you for joining us for this, like, kind of, insight and hello from different folks that are here mm -hmm. at the conference and um yeah hello to anyone else that's watching the uh, recording and catching up with this at any point as well um yeah so i think we're about at time so um yeah a big thank you and um, i don't know if Kaka and rob you had any last thoughts about the comments about the conference uh, you wanted to share it's fun to go to a conference again <laughs> it's yes. fun to go to conference again. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's great but it's so exhausting <laughs> yeah i'm not yeah. used to like 12 hours of interaction <laughs> with humans a day now yeah yeah i mean okay note to self in-person conference good <laughs> try it out again <laughs> i'll see y'all we'll uh, next you. time you have a workshop yeah. ciao for now take care bye bye everyone two we'll stop the recording now thanks so much <laughs>